would like to invite Professor G. Balkrishna Iyer, National Chair, Rajiv Gandhi Center for Biotechnology, Trivandrum in South India, and the Vice President of our Foundation, to deliver the opening remarks. Professor Nair again needs no introduction. He is an internationally, internationally renowned scientist and a fellow of several national and international academies. He has received seven awards, including the prestigious Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Award for Medical Sciences in 1998 for his contribution to the discovery of Vibrio Colliery O139 Bengal. He is an author of over 500 research papers, several book chapters, and has edited or co-edited several books. In fact, he is also an esteemed editor of the Proceedings of our Symposium. Professor Nair, please. Professor Anil Kumar Tyagi, our chief guest, Professor Nirmal Kumar Ganguly, the president of this foundation, and distinguished guests, friends, and colleagues. It gives me gr great pleasure on behalf of the president of this foundation and on, the uh, and on behalf of the governing body to welcome you all to this, uh, I think, seventh in the annual series of symposia conducted by the foundation, the Yakult India Microbiota and Science Foundation. Thank you for coming. We recognize that today is a weekend, the next two days, and despite that, you are here to participate along with us. Uh, we promise that you will not be let down. The next 24 hours are going to be high part science in an area which is moving faster than what one can imagine. In these opening remarks, I won't uh, take much of your time, but I'll dwell on two points. One, and both I'll relate it to myself in a way as I seen it. One is what are sterile sites? And the other is the multidisciplinary nature of human microbiome research. Coming to sterile sites, for me at least, I thought breast milk was sterile. Until uh, I started reading on literature, I, he I heard the, the wonderful uh, lecture of Dr. Patricia Conway at the Asian, at the Singapore Asian Microbial, uh, Microbiome Co Conference. It, was, it has been known since the 70s that you have microorganisms in the breast milk, but it was always related to infection, mastitis or things. And therefore, microbiologists looked only for pathogens and not for non-pathogenic forms. But with the development of uh, next generation sequencing, with the development of high part technology, the omics technology, things began changing. We today know that breast milk of a normal healthy woman has about 10 to the power of three to 10 to the power of four microorganisms. And there are over 200 species recognized in the breast milk. In fact, the breast milk serves as a continuous inoculum after the initial inoculum or the initial transplant from the vagina if it's a normally delivered baby or from the environment. So that's the importance. But it's easy said, this has generated a whole lot of controversy. Where does bacteria come into the breast milk? Of course, uh, the traditional view is contamination, contamination from the oral area of the infant or contamination from the skin of the mother. But then science has shown that this may not be true. And there's a whole group of scientists who now think that it's active migration from the intestine, hitchhiking on the dendritic cells or immune cells and migrating onto the mammary glands. And uh, therefore being present for that brief or for that period of time when the woman is pregnant and also when uh, she delivers and feeds the baby for the next six months or odd. So it's actually fascinating. This is controversial. But why I'm trying to tell this is let your minds free. You know, we have, I have been taught microbiology saying that there are sterile sites, that the organism, if an organism cannot be uh, cultured, there is no taxonomy. But things are rapidly changing, some things which are very difficult for me as a classical microbiologist to conceive. But I do accept that with these powerful techniques in hand, a lot can be done. 
The other area where, again, sterile site one thinks is the enduring influence of the, uh, of the sterile womb paradigm. It's thought that the womb is sterile, but this is another area where microbiologists have penetrated and found that uh, you can find microorganisms in the follicular fluid. You can find it in, the, uh, in other areas which were completely thought to be sterile. So all I have a message is let your minds loose. Uh, don't be rigid, but, uh, uh, but look at it the way the science is going. So that's one thing. And of course, all of you are aware that although in mammals we have not shown this maternal transmission of bacteria, in the invertebrates, there's almost a century of research where uh, the progeny, uh, where the mother uh, seeds the, off, uh, the growing offspring. So there are, uh, there are interesting parallels in literature and I would recommend that you read it. It's, it's, it's a fascinating area of science. It's almost like science fiction. The other area that I wanted to uh, dwell on is uh, the inherent multidisciplinary nature of the human microbiome. When I started five years back into the human microbiome research, I convinced myself, because of my entric microbiology background, that I'll only work on the gut microbiome. Until, of course, uh, a few months back, a colleague from Chandigarh, Dr. Shaurabh uh, Datta, came and visited our labs and talked about the breast microbiome. And uh, this is something which I didn't believe at that time, but the amount of literature that has uh, gotten in is staggering. So just interactions, don't close your minds, don't, uh, I mean, go beyond your LMs. Even for probiotics, I have uh, kind of had the influence of Dr. Nija Hajela and her enthusiastic uh, enthusiasm on probiotics, a lot to learn. But uh, the most interesting of all was uh, when we started our microbiome work, uh, we had the sequence data of uh, two children, one a malnourished child and one a healthy child. And we had tons of data, you know, terabytes information, and we had no clue what to do. We went into the uh, free websites which gave us softwares like MGRAST and a whole lot of other things, but didn't make any progress until uh, one of my close friends who has rescued me several times, Dr. Amit Ghosh, introduced me to Dr. Sharmila Mande. And uh, that was uh, the beginning of a great story. Uh, we were the microbiologists, she was the computer analyst, she and a crew at the Tata Consultancy Service, and we had uh, we, we are in a whole lot of work on the, on, on the gut microbiome and other microbiomes like the vaginal microbiome. So the message that I want to get across and the message that I want to tell you here today, especially to our younger colleagues, is this conference is you have multiple colleagues from different disciplines. The general tendency in the symposium is uh, people of uh, same disciplines congregate together and just talk about what they have. But I would recommend that you mix. You have nutritionists, you have clinicians, and you have a whole melange of very interesting people. Uh, let loose your uh, shyness and uh, interact with them. The purpose of uh, this symposium will then be solved. Thank you for your time.